Hello, and welcome back to the Discover Virginia Beach podcast, where we set out to discover, define, and do everything that the Virginia Beach area has to offer for both locals and tourists alike. Today, I am joined by a very special guest, and if you're just now tuning in, we are in the middle of season two, discovering everything that Virginia Beach has to offer, and I am joined by recording artist and folk single uh, singer, songwriter Peter Sun. Uh, Peter draws much of his inspiration from the splendor of nature, crafting captivating composition that evokes a sense of nostalgia with a new contemporary feel. Uh, he also writes records and produces all of his own music, infusing heartfelt lyrics and timeless melodies that mirror his love for the outdoors. Peter has been featured in the Kind of Cool magazine and a part of the Undiscovered piece and featured in Classical Crossover Magazine. Peter, with that said, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for having me. This is so, so exciting. Yeah, well, Peter, I understand um, you are not from the Virginia Beach area originally. Rather, you grew up in a small valley town in Pennsylvania. Would That's you right. mind sharing uh, what was it like growing up in a small town? And of course, um, how did um, music enter the scene for you? Yeah. So, um, yeah, like you said, I grew up in a little valley town outside of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. And, uh, you know, days were spent growing up, uh, you know, always outside. Uh, we our neighborhood backed up to um, like some train tracks and a bunch of woods. And there was a little little river back there. And we would just, you know, we'd have a good time with our BB guns and things like that. And uh, anyway, I, I got into music because I started singing this song. Um, proud to be an American by Lee Greenwood. And, uh, and people around me were like, Oh, you, you sing that actually well, I was about nine. And uh, so I was like, Oh, you know what, I, I do like singing. So I just started singing more and started taking vo like voice lessons. And I got into theater while I was in uh, elementary school and uh, did professional theater up there. And, um, and eventually, uh, you know, moved down here to Virginia when I was probably about 11 or so. I love that. What a fun story. So music seemed to really enter into your scene very early on in life with your, yeah. uh, you know, people telling you you're actually a good singer. And of course, you know, having an opportunity to, uh, you know, be in theater. Did um, w when was uh, playing instruments entered into the scene? What, what was the first instrument you learned how to play? Yeah. So my grandma um, on my mom's side, she played piano. And then my grandma on my dad's side sang. So um, my grandma on my mom's side, she taught me since I was five years old how to play piano. And so that was my first instrument. And uh, and then, of course, singing was always part of my family culture and dynamic. Um, every get together was singing. So music was always just a large part of growing up and, you know, has increased, you know, my the its presence in my life, you know, obviously, as of now. I love that. I love that, especially how it's, you know, what what seems like a, a normal family tradition can right. really expand into a, a career and, and a path for you to really, yeah. you know, become an outlet and, and share um, share the music that you create, which is wonderful. Do, do you play any other instruments or, or how many more other instruments do you yeah. have besides the piano and, of course, vocals? <laughs> right. So uh, I play guitar. Uh, guitar is the newest add in. I've been playing for about two years and uh, it's honestly coming. It, it's it's becoming like one of my favorite instruments. I write almost exclusively on guitar as of now, as of recently. Um, I love guitar. I'm not very good at guitar, uh, but that's what I like about it is because um, I have to remain simple when creating songs and uh, people remember how a song makes them feel over the technicalities of the song. So um, being a musician who's, you know, studied and, uh, you know, it, and for many years, it's it forces me. It's a great exercise to simple make it make it simple. I love that. I love that. And speaking of simple and simpler times, are there any memories of Pennsylvania that stand out to you that, you know, shaped and influenced uh, the way you interact with music now? Sure. Uh, yeah. So at the time I went to a church that was in the heart of the mountains of uh, Perry County, Virginia, or of uh, Perry County, Pennsylvania. And so it was just mountainous and beautiful. And so um, just the whole culture up there was very, uh, you know, outdoorsy and, uh, it, you know, it, it inspired, but I actually have a funny story about that. Um, in Pennsylvania, like I said earlier, I, I grew up in a neighborhood that backed up to these railroad tracks and forests. And, uh, my brothers and I, I'm one of, one of four brothers. And, uh, and so, um, we went and we'd go to explore with our BB guns and things like that out into the forest. And one time we found uh, a whole little campsite of somebody who was living back there. 
And, uh, you know, when you're, when you're, when you're with your brothers, with your friends, you guys are all from the ages of nine to 13, you know, this is our land, you know, this is our domain. And so, uh, we actually, we'd see this guy's name all over stuff that was marked back there. He just lived back there. And so what we ended up doing was again, like I said, we were like, this is our land. So we went back and we found his campsite and, uh, we never, we didn't see him. We later saw him, but we found this campsite and then we took it apart and we like threw stuff around. We were like, this is our place. And in hindsight, it wasn't very cool, but, um, you know, it was just like, who is this guy? This is this not, he's not supposed to be back here. And, uh, anyway, a couple of years go by and I'm telling this story and, uh, I was telling we called the police eventually. Cause we found weapons and stuff like that. This guy, it was starting to get real weird. A lot of, um, substances back there as well. And so anyway, we called the police and police go back there and they, you know, find it out. And, um, a couple of years later, we talked to one of the police officers and, you know, small town. And, uh, I talked to one of the police officers and he's like, yeah, that guy, um, that guy was a paranoid schizophrenic that was like kicked out of Pennsylvania. And he was just living back there. He's like, you guys could have like really gotten hurt if you guys were messing around with stuff back there. And like, here we are aggravating the, like the mess out of this guy and just, you know, just totally messing with them. And, and so it's, that was just kind of one of those crazy Tom Sawyer kind of stories that uh definitely stuck with me and um my brothers and i we we all still talk about that and our friends that lived up there we still talk about that story wow what what a tale so this this individual yeah. kicked out of pennsylvania and you just so happened to stumble on his campsite and and, yeah. and flash <laughs> yeah yeah i'm so happy we ended up being safe because we were we were really messing around yeah wow so um th- th- throughout your childhood you grew up in pennsylvania and i'd love to know peter what brought you to the coastal virginia area and then of course as i ask every guest uh what got you to stick around and build uh your life <laughs> for you your music here sure um so my dad is a pastor and so uh, about close to 10 years ago he took a church that was down here and uh moved the family uh we all set up camp basically and um have been here ever since uh my brother's here and he's married he has a kid and um my uh, awesome nephew and uh they they lived you know just down the street and we just kind of you know started a new life just down here and what kept me around is obviously my family but i also go to college and i commute to one of the schools around here love it love it so you are a folk singer songwriter yeah. would you be willing to pull back the curtain a bit for us and sure. share with us your process for crafting lyrics and music all together yeah. So um, uh, similar to what I said earlier is I love writing gu- on guitar because it makes me, you know, have to simple it down. But when I simple down musically, um, it pushes the lyrics to be elevated. Right. So, uh, you know, you're able to express a lot and, um, you know, use your experiences, but also you can use the creative tool of romanticizing those experiences as well. So it's finding that balance of being relatable and writing about very true things. Um, but sometimes you can uh, be a little bit too open and you need to also protect those things that you want to keep to yourself. Some people put everything out and that's that's good. But for me, I like to so- draw certain boundaries of uh, to kind of have that to avoid Taylor Swifting, basically. And that's no hate against Taylor Swift. But I like to you know keep a level of, of respect to those people who have been in my life or if I'm writing about them or whatnot um, or those situations. But yeah. So again, keeping things simple and writing true and honest things that I think people really care about. I mean, nature is nature is one of the driving forces since the beginning of time that has inspired creativity and art. And, uh, you know, to kind of follow those roots of, you know, what we're living, we're living alongside the nature and the animals and, um, you know, kind of, you know, trying to channel that through music as well. I think it's a very important thing. Yeah, absolutely. And and I love that, you know, keeping keeping the the mystery in the music is uh, you know, definitely a great tactic to use to uh, you know, also keep your music interesting and also to protect like you said those individuals or people or experiences that may you like to keep personal and protected. Um w- with all that, I mean, inspiration plays plays a huge yeah. part. Your inspiration from as you mentioned nature, but also yeah. inspiration from other musicians uh I, yeah. I didn't mention before the conversation, uh Brian Wilson, John Denver, uh, mm-hmm. Simon Barfunkel, name, to name yeah. a few. When it comes to your unique sound, is there a process or method for analyzing work without directly copying someone else's? And can you share yeah. with us any examples uh, of ways you intentionally do that during your uh, musical creative process? 
Yeah, um, it definitely is. It, it's definitely something you have to think about. And sometimes you're writing a, a melody and you're like, oh, this is so good. And then a couple of days later, you're like, wait a minute. Now, <laughs> I think that's I've heard that before. Um, it kind of like with anything, you know, you don't want to copy or mimic, but also at the same time, um, you know, trying to trying to think about what they did and and how do you how are you different from them and how are you similar Um, what are some things that you like to pull? What are things you don't like to pull? You know, it's all just kind of this balance game of, uh, you'd also don't, you know, you don't just want to be, I know for me personally, I don't just want to, you know, be a cover artist and there's nothing wrong with that, but I want to, you know, I want to be original and create original music. And so finding the inspirations of the inspirations, that's a lot of times where I go, because it's a little bit more removed from that artist that I like, but it's what inspired them to make theirs. So, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's definitely a process, but um, if anyone ever figures it out, uh, they got to let me know because I'm very interested yeah. in that. Yeah. Well, the, you, know, <laughs> you know, the old phrase, you know, it's nothing new under the sun. Um, right. Going right. back to earlier, uh, probably church days uh, for yourself. But yeah, it's the ecclesiastical uh, view. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. With that said, you know, Peter, I, I'd love to uh, share for the audience, you know, maybe mm-hmm. folks who are in the Virginia Beach area, uh, can they expect to see you uh, at no. any live concerts? Um, and if so, where, where do you where do you play? Yeah. So um, right now I'm in the process of booking and scheduling shows and, um, you know, working with a couple of booking agents and things like that. Uh, right now I'm uh, scheduling a show in Richmond. I haven't scheduled any shows in Virginia Beach yet, but there are some different opportunities and open doors that I'm most likely going to be. Uh, I will be playing here, so I will be. I just don't have anything announced quite yet. I, I love that. I love that. And total side note, Peter, we were we had um, the Suffolk Tourism Board uh, on for, uh, an earlier episode of season two. We also have yeah. Virginia Beach Farmers Market as well. I know those two folks. Yes. Uh, firstly, let me know they are interested in connecting with local artists. So if that is oh, something great. you're interested in, hit me up afterwards. We can definitely get you connected there because they were, the, especially the Suffolk one. She was like, yeah, we're looking for more stuff to do. If you know any musicians, I was like, oh, a musician yeah. on season two. Let me check in with him. Um, with that said, Peter, uh, that is more of a personal question. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Have you play some live shows here in the area um, for live music in general? Are there any favorite places or memories that you have of playing live music in general? Anything that stand out to you? Yeah. Yeah, um, I have experience uh, when I was, I think, 16 or 17, I was invited uh, to uh, write a few songs and perform them in an off-Broadway show in New York. And uh, so that was probably one of my favorite times to ever perform. It was uh, Black Friday. So it was beautiful in New York all Christmas and, you know, Christmas is coming up. So I always think about that. Um, But again, I did a lot of professional theater up in Pennsylvania and things like that. But as of recently... um, as of recently, I've just been kind of performing more through the social media rather than venues at the moment. And uh, I've been building up the discography of my music and working on, you know, my whole uh, look and, you know, trying to build up something that is worth to be listened to and and worth to, be, to hear live. So now it's finally this growing stage of uh, getting to a place wherever live performances are on the, on the horizon. Yeah, absolutely. And then there's no, uh, no shame in the social media game, so to speak. Yeah. That's where a lot of uh, new music and artists are found. That's where I found you sure. in my research for the podcast. I mean, yeah. with a thousand YouTube subscribers and, you know, 10,000 plus uh, followers on Instagram, it's yeah. worth noting that, hey, you know, you do have a, a digital audience that exists that that likes hearing your music, which I'm sure is very rewarding for you. Yeah, it's definitely, it's been hard work, but um, it's exciting to see it grow. Yeah, absolutely. So I understand you enjoy the outdoors and coastal Virginia mm-hmm. area has a lot to offer yeah. there from hiking to biking trails to yeah. uh, leisure water activities, which I will preface shout out to season two, because we have a lot of folks in that arena coming on the show. So super excited to talk about in that in later episodes. But for you specifically, Peter, how has the landscape of the Virginia Beach area influenced your songwriting? Yeah, yeah, that's really excellent question. Um, I. I have just been kind of discovering all these different little pockets of Virginia wildlife, and it's been exceptional. I'm super into mountain biking, and a lot of times I'll go up to the uh, Pocahontas trails and mountain bike. And um, there's a lot of different locations around here. Um, And for anyone listening, Pocahontas trails are up around Richmond area. But around here in Virginia Beach area, um, you know, there's Dismal Swamp and there's some other locations. And so um, 
I think all of those, anytime you're outside, I, anytime at least I'm outside um, and doing something active or being engaged with that, um, I'm always inspired. So it's it's hard to sp- like pick out one specific thing, um, but uh, there's definitely definitely some songs in my lyrics, especially the song "Lead Me to the Water." Uh, there's a lot of I use a lot of um, references to nature and um, kind of showing that you know love is is more than just you know, uh, someone's a sunset, right. But more of like a whole ecosystem and kind of watching out how everything works together, you know, and it's, uh, it's a whole process and it's not just one thing or someone's not just beautiful, like a sunrise or something like that. They're a whole, um, again, ecosystem of there's, you know, lakes and rivers and there's, you know, river beds and rocks and, um, all sorts and trees and branches and, um, kind of anything you can kind of think of. And I do talk about canoeing. I love canoeing, <laughs> you know, spending the day in your canoe is one of the lines. And, uh, I, I, I'm a big canoe guy. <laughs> I, I love that Peter. And and I think of, from what you said, we'll, we'll definitely snapshot that. Cause I think there's some, there's another song in there about, about an ecosystem in general. Um, yeah. we really appreciate you sharing your insight. We do have some fun questions coming up for you about your song. Yeah. But in the meantime, I'd love to know for you, uh, from you. Um, So obviously, community plays a large part in the way we live and conduct our businesses here in the area. Uh, Can you uh, share with us about your efforts to showcase your talents uh, within the community? And of course, I'd love to hear uh, more about, you know, your, um, for example, your nursing home and um, and your communities that you service as well. Yeah. So um, that's all kind of tied into to that tied into one. That's a great question. I have a huge heart for older people and um, I think they're just, you know, really wise, really funny, you know, and uh, I think, I think uh, the elderly rock. And uh, so I like to spend as much time as I can uh, with some of these folks and uh, playing at nursing homes and assisted living facilities is one of my favorites because I also think it's a humbling thing because no matter how well things are doing online or how crazy things are blowing up, or maybe they're not, it's always great to come back to these to these places where people are just there to absorb the music and to see somebody who's, you know, taking time and uh, not only playing, but then after the shows, I like to go and and talk to them and kind of get to know their stories as well. They just spent an hour listening to my story. So, you know, it's only right to talk to them and hear their stories and their experiences. So that's how I like to kind of engage in the community. And I I like to do a lot of um, other kind of especially now it's coming up with Christmas time. There's a lot of volunteer events. Um, this summer I was able to, um, participate with the church, a local church and building a house, uh, for some, for the homeless and, you know, things like that. Um, community service is one of my favorite things, but to do music as well with the, with nursing homes and assisted living is my ultimate favorite. Yeah, that that's incredible. And that's the theme of a lot of our guests here on the show is just figuring out like, not only just having a business or having a voice in the community, yeah. using it for uh, the greater good for, you know, doing something that you might not get uh, return in value for necessarily. Right. Um, Peter, we we love that. And we really appreciate you sharing that. Um, when it comes to uh, the Virginia Beach people and community members, I'd yep. love to know, has there been any specific maybe nursing home stories or people yeah. you bumped, in, uh, bumped into or maybe way, while you were building your church, uh, w- working with the church, rebuilding a yeah. home? Uh, yeah. any stories, uh, stand out to you as far as maybe where you found some inspiration for some of your song lyrics or maybe yeah. just songwriting in general? Yeah. Um, I got inspired to start songwriting because I was taking this music production class at a school of music in Virginia beach. And, um, he's my mentor now, but the teacher at the time, his name is Gary Juju garlic. And he's one of the greatest men I've known. And he's just an overall great, great guy. And he's, he's, uh, he was teaching music production and, um, and so I got involved in this class and you know, I was in seventh grade and he was talking and I was learning and, but I just felt like I was lagging behind in the class. But then he was like, Matthew. And I, cause I told him, I was like, Hey, I, I kind of, I want to quit. And he was like, Matthew, if you don't, if you don't catch up in the next week, like you just stay in the class. If you don't catch up next week, I'll pay for this month's tuition. Like just keep going in the class. And I was like, all right, all right, Mr. Garlic. So stick with the class. And, uh, music production, just, you know, that lit a fire in me. And I started, that was the reason I started writing songs because I had to start writing songs for assignments. And so anyway, years down the line, um, now I go back to that class and visit the high school and, uh, or high school, middle school, and, and uh, I'm able to talk about music production with the other students. And it's just been really amazing because Mr. Garlic has 
uh, been there for the, you know, has just been a great mentor over the past couple of years. So, um, and we just always have so many crazy stories doing gigs together and having fun. And it's so fun to go from a student now to, um, you know, a fellow professional that's able to play gigs together. And, you know, he's still my mentor and, you know, we still get together. And I think that's someone in the community that has definitely shaped and um, really inspired me. Yeah. Wow. What a, what a story. So he essentially was willing to pay for your tuition if yeah. it came to it to give you the opportunity to pursue music because he saw yeah. you, what we all see now when we listen to music. <laughs> Hopefully we'll be able to take a sniff and put it at the end of this episode. We'll, we'll see, of course, with licensing and such, but sure. you know, this, this, this passion that you have and yeah. the way it transcends into music is, is, is a very a uh, great gift and a very noble thing of you to use and very fortunate. Um, and what an incredible story of someone to yeah. want to continue on and invest in you in that way. Um, yeah. Speaking of song lyrics, um, sure. I'm getting a new section. We've never done this before. So you're okay. our first guest for this. Um, typically we do a rapid fire section, but this one, sure. um, I'm going to title it, explain the lyric. So sure. the lyric, um, I've been watching some of your YouTube videos. So I'm trying to stay away from something you might've already covered. Um, sure ask uh i'll share a lyric and just ask maybe um you know the inspiration for that lyric or sure. perhaps whatever was going on that moment you feel comfortable sharing sound good Great. it sounds amazing all right so from the say uh from the song say good night the chorus repeats back what kind of song would you like me to sing for you what kind of song would you like me uh would you like to hear what kind of song would you keep uh would keep you near uh mm -hmm. Can you take us? Sorry, I butchered that again. Let me. No. Do, do you mind repeating that for yeah. us? You probably know a little bit better than that. Yeah. yeah. The lyric is What kind of song would you like me to sing to you? What kind of song would you like to hear? I don't want to make you cry, but something to say goodnight or something along, along those lines. Um, well, the, the reason I wrote that uh, was, you know, I was at this place wherever I wasn't sure exactly where my relationship was with somebody. And so at that point, you're kind of like, ooh, as a songwriter, I always just write no matter what. And so that's my way of, you know, journaling or kind of keeping record of, you know, what internally what's going on. So um, that song, that line is kind of um, explaining like, what kind of song do I write right now? You know, what, what, what words do I write down? Is this a love song? You know, is this just nothing? Is this a nothing song? You know, is this, you know, is this going to go anywhere? Is this, um, you know, not going to go anywhere? So it was, that's, that's kind of like the meaning of that. Um, and trying to, maybe uh kind of move in the direction of putting a label on something you know and making it official but you're just not sure yet if that's where they're at love it love it uh next one is from andrea says uh who is andrea or what does andrea represent and yeah. uh, why is what she says so important to you yeah um yeah so andrea or andrea um <laughs> that's one of my favorite songs i wanted this like baroque kind of sound to it something very classical and um Andrea kind of represents the uh, kind of like your classic ex-girlfriend, you know, um, someone who's, you know, was really important to you and uh, someone that you kind of gave everything to and it just didn't work out. And um, and then there's lines talking about, you know, seeing, you know, her friends at the grocery store and, you know, having moments of that wherever there's little bits and pieces of their life. And um and she's spreading your name all over the town, you know, stuff like that, wherever you're like, all right, this is getting enough, you know, classic, <laughs> kind, you know, ex-girlfriend, but I think it's probably like, you're more like your toxic ex-girlfriend who, when she was with you, you know, maybe couldn't stand you, but now that she's, you know, you're not together anymore, you know, she has nothing to say, but talk about you, you know? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, last one for you. Um, sure. and, oh, second to last one. Sorry. Uh, in yeah. the backseat, you share the yeah. phrase. Feel each other's heart beats fall in love, which yeah. I'll I'll slow that down again for those of you listening. So feel each other's heart beats fall in love. Yeah. Can you tell us more about what led you to creating this song specifically? Because it seems like a very intimate time, but it's also, yeah. um, you know, on a broader note, something that, you know, hearkening back to the Lion King, can we all feel the love tonight without being <laughs> so easy? It's something yeah. in a lot of ways we all want to connect with somebody on at some level at some point in their lives. So. What what was it like for you in that moment? Yeah, um, backseat is is definitely one of my favorite songs I've written. Um, it's definitely one of the more suggestive songs that um, you know. I, I don't I don't know if I would have put that out um, now, but at the time when I put that out, it's kind of those um, you know those first moments wherever you're together and um, with somebody, and you know 
it maybe it's just like a like something stupid that was in like high school you know i wrote that while i was in high school um and so to make it relevant now it's one of those things where those moments that are like just super quiet and just super sweet and tender of being together with somebody and to you know have those the uh, moments just like you know feel the heartbeats of somebody else or to you know hold the hand of somebody else it's like the small um you know intimate things that we really fall in love with and uh backseat was all about that and um you know again one of the more suggestive songs maybe by title but when you listen to it you're like oh this isn't this isn't talking about anything you know suggestive it's more talking about you know falling in love with the small details of in the, yeah the small details of being with someone yeah absolutely uh last one for you peter um yeah. how how is new york how is new yeah. york yeah yeah how's new york isn't that the age old question <laughs> Yeah. Um, How's New York is uh, one of my favorite songs, but um, that song was written because uh, at the time I, I didn't, I didn't have anyone who lived in New York that I was like in love with, but it re- represented, there were times whenever I moved, especially, um, but there were times wherever people or people would move away from me, wherever I just really, really missed them, you know, just really miss them and miss being together. And, um, you know, and, you know, if I really, you know, I really, some, some of these folks, you know, I really loved and, um that song brings a place of there's a line that's like i see your posts you're doing fine you know um i wish that i could still call you mine or something like that you know it's 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 a long distance game you know and sometimes long distance is how it goes and other times not but it's a difficult game to play well peter we really appreciate you diving into those lyrics just a little bit more yeah and and sharing that with us um because once again we uh, I, I I personally have really enjoyed your song and I'm very excited to uh, share with our audience here because it is um, very light, very fun in, in a yeah. lot of ways. Uh, definitely Virginia Beach vibe uh, when it comes to yeah. just the the, the mellow nature um, with, with very thoughtful words. Um, and with that said, Peter, we'd love to roll into our next section. We have uh, yeah. rapid fire questions. These are sure. fast. Uh, feel free to explain in as much detail uh, at, or as little detail as you yeah. like. Are you ready? Okay. I'm I'm so ready. All right, favorite hiking or biking trail to visit here in the Virginia Beach area that you have yet to mention. So Pocahontas Trails, yeah, Dismal Swamp are out of the running. Northwest River Park is my go-to. Love it. Favorite Virginia Beach to visit? Sandbridge. It's got to be Sandbridge. Lo- got to love the Sandbridge secrets. <laughs> got to. Yes. Yeah. What's your favorite instrument to play and why? Guitar. And kind of like what I said earlier. You know, got to keep it simple. Now, when it comes to uh, your specific preferences, is there a best place or best resource to get all of your musical gear and equipment tuned up for that next uh, creative project? Um, Oh, that's a really great question. Normally, I just utilize any type of local music store. Um, I one time used music and arts in Chesapeake. Um, There's also different places. You know, I've used Guitar Center, you know. Local. Uh, I'm not. Ash- I'm not ashamed to, to admit it. That's okay. That's okay. When they have a. That's. I was curious to know. These. These are a yeah. lot of questions. Personally, um, yeah. <laughs> if you could bring any musician, past or present, with you to perform a show here mm-hmm. in Virginia Beach, who would it be and why? Brian Wilson from the Beach Boys, hundred um, percent. Not only does he have that, it has the coastal view. The view, um, obviously, the West Coast. But uh, he has a timeless sound, and uh, I was able to, to see and meet the rest of the Beach Boys um, when they came to a concert up in Pennsylvania. That was crazy. But I still have yet to meet Brian. But he's 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 alive, obviously, obviously. But um, I would do anything to perform with him. Brian, if you're out there listening, <laughs> sponsor please, the show. Brian, have Peter have Peter perform a concert here, at Virginia Beach. We, we'd love to have it. Pharrell Pharrell needs some uh, needs some backup singers. You know, we we got you covered. <laughs> yes, Pharrell, please, if you're hearing this ring brian wilson i've said i've sent him and his team dozens of dms so i'm i'm hoping one day somebody yes. will through and read them so yeah let's go this time. <laughs> peter <laughs> uh this has been a great conversation we really yeah. appreciate you uh carving some time out of your schedule to come have Absolutely. a conversation with us to be vulnerable and of course to share with us how you've discovered virginia beach uh, yeah. with that said i'd love to roll out the virtual red carpet for you my friend Thank please you. share any creative projects any special events that you have upcoming uh the floor yeah. is all yours yeah. Um, again, thank you so much for having me. This has been amazing. And uh, I love Virginia Beach and uh, the 757 area. It's absolutely incredible music scene. A lot of great artists are here. 
And um, I just want to say uh, I'm working on, uh, I just put out an EP album called Lead Me to the Water. And it's a folk singer songwriter album. And uh, I'm working on another project to release in the spring. And uh, I still have to yet yet to title it, but uh, it's uh, it's an album that's going to be, again, a folk album. And I can't wait to perform it all in, up, all up and down the East Coast uh, next year. Well, super excited for that. Definitely stay tuned with Peter's son and everything he has going on in the link in the description below. Peter, this has been fantastic. Thank you for your time. And of course, thank you to our dedicated listeners for checking out another episode of the Discover Virginia Beach podcast. If you have to do so already, please check the link in the description below and fill out a review. If you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, hit that like button, leave a comment, love to know what your thoughts are. And if there's anything I can do differently or ask any different questions, I am all ears. With that said, we hope you join in uh, for another episode later on in the week, and we'll talk to you then. Bye for now.